QuickBooks Online Navigation Overview. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to open up the free QuickBooks Online test drive, which you can find by searching in your favorite search engine, in this case, Google for the QuickBooks Online test drive. I'm going to be opening up the one that has a URL that contains the Intuit.com in it, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to be opening up the United States version of it, verifying that we're not a robot and continue. Now, the first thing we're going to do, and we're going to start doing this every time we open up the QuickBooks file, is to open up our major financial statement reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. I'm going to be opening them up in a new tab. So I'm going to go to the tab up top, right click on that tab. I'm going to duplicate that tab. So now we have two tabs up top. I'm going to go into this one that we duplicated, right click on it again, duplicate it again. Then I'm going to go back to the middle tab as the one to the right is thinking. I'm going to go into the reports, which are currently found here under the accounting view. We'll take a look at the difference between the accounting and business view shortly. And then I'm going to open up the balance sheet report. I'm going to go to the tab to the right. I'm then going to go to the reports drop down and go to the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement report. I'll change the date range up top. I'm going to make this for the year 2022. So from 010122, I think this is the easiest way to type in a custom date range is to just put uh, two digit by two digit by two digit 010122 to 12 December 31st, 3122 and tab and it'll format it for you. Then we're going to run and refresh the report. So there it is January through December. I'm going to do the same thing on the tab in the middle, going back to the tab to the middle and adjust the date up top from 010122 tab on the keyboard, 123122 tab. So January through December, run the report. I wanna get used to doing this every time because these are the end products. These are what we're going to be creating as we do the data input from a financial statement perspective. These, these are the end product. So then we're gonna to go to the first tab. I usually have the layout being the first tab is where I do the data input. And then as I do the data input, I check on the other couple tabs, which have my major financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement. So going back to the middle tab, remembering that in this middle tab, I can zoom in and out by holding control, scrolling up on the scroll bar. I'm currently at 175. I'm going back down to 125% on the zoom in. Now we're on a web-based application. So most of the activities that we're gonna do are on the left-hand side or on the drop-down up top. And then the things that we're gonna be filling out or working with, forms or the, fine, or the statements are gonna be in the middle. Now, the first thing we wanna note is this, this panel on the left-hand side has changed greatly and they're kind of toggling back and forth between two looks and feels of uh, this left-hand side. So if you, if you go to the drop down up top on the cog, we can switch to the business view down below. And this is like the newer look and feel that they're trying to put in place. And, uh, and it has a little bit more kind of like a slick look to it and it has some icons to it. And uh, it's got some different names within the categorization. So I'm gonna try to go back and forth between these two views. If you're ever looking at something that's that's uh, an older kind of application to try to figure out how to do something within someone made a, a presentation that's older, then you probably want to be looking at the accounting view. I still think the accounting view has got some more professional terminology that I'm more used to, and they're using more kind of kind of loose terminology here, which I think that could be nice. I mean, it could be attractive. 
uh, to some people, but it's also a little confusing because it switches around in terms of the terminology. So uh, let's keep it here for now, but remember you could toggle back and forth between those two views on the cog dropdown and switch back and forth between the accountant view and the uh, business view. So I'll keep it in the business view for now. This whole panel on the left-hand side can be collapsed. So I can do so with the hamburger, they call it up top. So I can close it up like that and I can open it back up. If you were to scroll in a lot on the zoom in, it might at some point close that toggle automatically. So because just of the size of the screen, because it's trying to optimize the size of the screen, if you scroll back down, it doesn't open back up. I could just hit the hamburger and open that back up. So it didn't, it didn't go away. It's not lost forever. You don't need to restart the program or anything. It's still there. Okay, and so then we've got these items on the left. Now, this item up top is usually the one that you will go into whenever you're doing your normal data input. So in the normal accounting process, what you're gonna do is usually enter forms, which will be, you can see in the layout of the major categories, customers, vendors, employees, and others. And as we do these data input forms, these are the things that create the financial transaction journal entries, the double entry accounting system, at least two accounts being impacted. And those are the things that allow QuickBooks to pretty much seamlessly and automatically create the financial statements the balance sheet and the income statements that we opened prior to this, as well as the subsidiary reports. So most of the time when you're just doing data input, when you're entering transactions, this is gonna be the place you're gonna go. Now realize also that you might enter transactions depending on the type of company with the bank feeds, which means you're gonna go into the bank feed center a lot. We'll talk about the bank feeds in a future presentation. Remember that if you're trying to turn on the bank feeds, it's a great tool to be using, but you have to know where they fit in your accounting system in order to optimize the use of the tool. Otherwise you can get kind of overwhelmed with the data input. So we'll talk more about bank feeds in its own section or its own course at a future uh, point in time. Every time we open our QuickBooks company file, it will usually take us to the home page, which under the business view is called the get things done page. You see what I'm talking about with this terminology thing. It's a bit more hip on the business view than the accounting view. And then when we want to do data input, the easiest place to go, but not the only place to go is generally with the plus button. We find the form here. When we got, want to go into areas specific to a cycle, such as a customer cycle, or a revenue cycle or an expense cycle, which is which is the accounts payable cycle, for example, purchases cycle or the employees cycle, then we're usually gonna go into one of these menus on the left, which we will go into in detail shortly. And then when we're looking at underlying foundational things like lists, chart of accounts and whatnot, sometimes we go up to the cog up top and we also find our profile options and so on in that dropdown. Those, those are the main kind of categories. Now I'm gonna take a look at a flowchart, which actually comes from the desktop view, which is kind of similar to this flowchart, but I think the desktop view has a flowchart that can give us an idea to visualize the cycles that we will be working with, which will help us to better understand how we're gonna navigate around the software. So it's it, once you understand the flowchart, you don't need like the flowchart. It's just a way to kind of visualize how the forms are generally gonna be organized. So in your mind, you want to start thinking about the accounting flow in terms of cycles. So if you're in the vendor cycle or the payable cycle, the expense cycle, these are gonna be the forms that will be grouped in this kind of format uh, within it. So we're gonna either enter a check directly when we're paying something or have a transfer when we're paying for something in order to buy goods and services or expenses for the company, or we're gonna enter a bill and then we're gonna pay the bill if we have an accrual system. When we go into uh, inventory, we might have a purchase order and then receive the bill, for example. If we're on the revenue side of things, we wanna think about the revenue cycle separately or the accounts receivable cycle, the income cycle, whatever you wanna call it. At the end of the day, we would expect there to be an increase in our checking account, a deposit from the customer for goods and services we provided them. But we might have that deposit directly from say the bank feeds, for example, depending on our system, if we're just getting deposits from like YouTube or something, or we might have a cash register situation and, and we have to collect it there and then deposit it and match it to the bank feeds or, or to, to, the, to the reconciliation or in an accrual system, we would have an invoice and then we would have to receive the payment on it 
and then deposit. So we want to have a visualization of the forms in relation to the cycle. And then clearly on the payroll cycle or employees cycle, we're going to be processing the payroll periodically, either weekly, semi-weekly, bi-weekly, uh, monthly, something like that. And then we're also going to have to pay the liabilities and we'll also have to deal with forms and whatnot, 940s, 941, W2, W3, uh, if and when those are applicable. So once we have this visualization in our mind, then we can start seeing those forms that we would do in the data input by cycle. So if I go back on over here, you have the same kind of thing with the drop downs. So they're grouping the forms. You don't have the flow chart, but you've got the forms related to the customer cycle, which you can also call the the revenue cycle, right? That's the money that we expect to be coming in at the end of the cycle for goods and services we provide to customers. Also, just remember that you have to kind of think of which side of the table you're on when looking at uh, terminology. So, for example, I can refer to myself as a customer and I, I can refer to the people that I serve as my customers. But from QuickBooks, we want the customers to just represent one side of the table. We are not the customer for QuickBooks. The customers are the people we, we serve. The people we, we buy from are vendors. Again, we can call ourselves vendors because we sell stuff. But from, from a QuickBooks terminology, we have to pick a side of the table. So a vendor means the people that we buy from uh, goods and services to run our business. And then employees, of course, are employees. And then within the customer cycle on the accrual system, we would have an invoice and then we would receive the payment. We might have an estimate, which would actually be before the invoice in certain circumstances. A credit memo would be a more rare kind of transaction that we would have to kind of reverse an invoice in essence. And then a sales receipt, that's the thing that would happen if we got paid at the point we actually did the work, like a cash register situation. And so we'll go into more of these forms form by form in the future, but you can see they're organized by cycle. Vendors, we got the expense form, which is like a check form that we would pay for goods and services uh, at that point in time that we're getting them. A check is the same kind of form, except it has a check number in essence. A bill would be the accrual form when we enter a bill and then pay for it. The pay bills would be uh, when we pay the bill, purchase order would be the thing that we do before uh, we get the inventory, request in the inventory, and so on. So you can see how they're grouped in here by cycle. You would like to visualize how these uh, forms are related to each other as we go through the cycle. For the customers, at the end of the day, we hopefully get a deposit. And for the vendors, at the end of the day, we're going to be paying for goods and services. For the employee cycle, at the end of the day, we're going to be paying for the payroll. Okay, so those are those major areas. And then in the drop down up top in the COG, you've got the information for like your company information account and settings manage your users that kind of stuff if you need to add more users level up on your quickbooks the type of quickbooks you're using for example lists refer to the foundational things that you're not going to set up all the time but they're kind of underlying like the general ledger kind of kind of stuff and your product list and item lists and then other tools over here and your profile and then, uh, and then let's just go through some of these on the left. I'll try to go through them both on this business view, and then we'll switch to the accountant view. So here we're, we're starting with the cool lingo, which I'm not quite as used to, but we'll, we'll say we got the get, get things done, the homepage. Usually this middle section, they, they do have a flow chart now, which is getting better, but it's still not something that you're gonna use all the time because this is the display screen and you haven't really gone into anything you wanna do yet. If I go down to the business overview, notice another tab opens over here. So now you've got this tab on the right when you're looking at this business view versus the accounting view. And then you've got this kind of sub tab that pops up. So then you've got the uh, business overview. This gives you some nice little quick look, which is kind of fancy to look at. Might give you a quick look and feel, but not where I usually go because I usually go to the reports themselves uh, for that kind of information, but it could be a, a nice kind of overview and the reports will be going here all the time because this is going to be where we opened up the balance sheet, the income statement, all the other reports. You've got tabs up top for the custom reports and the planner. 
This is another tool that's kind of a specialized type of tool that can help you with your, your cash flow planning. We might go into that in a little bit more depth in a future presentation. The banking tab is a little deceiving and I kind of wish they would put this more down at the bottom because this is really, a f they're trying to, trying to finance the business. So let's help you get funded. So QuickBooks Capital and our partner lenders offer tailored loans and so on. So this isn't really, this is them offering their services here in terms of loans. The PPE Center, that was a particular type of loan for uh, during the COVID situation. And, and they were offering that kind of stuff too. So this kind of a little deceiving I, that it's up here because you would kind of think that would be like your bank feeds or something, but no. So then you've got the get paid. Again, notice the terminology on this is kind of uh, interesting. Get paid and pay. So, so that's, you know, that's usually, so when you're saying you're going to get paid, that's going to be the money coming in. So from, from uh, the old terminology standpoint, you might call that like part of the customer cycle, part of the revenue cycle. And if you're going to pay the money at the end of the, the day is going to be going out. So now they're combining these two kind of cycles together in this one area that would be like the vendor cycle uh, kind of thing for us. So, so I, again, look at the terminology is kind of clearly kind of kind of hip terminology. So then you've got your overview up top income over time, kind of a, an, an, a, an overview a place to go where we can set up online and in-person payments, get paid anywhere. So these are going to be some possibly add on type of features, send an invoice that your customer can pay online and so on. So we've got some more options here and then we've got the get paid and paid. So the get paid you would think would be basically your customer center, right? That's, that's going to be the revenue cycle. So clearly we have the customers up top. And so these are the people that we're going to be putting in place uh, when uh, we receive the payments. We'll go into the, each of these in more detail later, but this is giving us detail, you know, about our customers and possibly outstanding invoices and so on. Estimates would be part of the, uh, the revenue cycle if we made an estimate before we issued an invoice, like a construction company or something like that. Invoices, these are going to be the invoices that are open for customers. So this is another way to look at the open invoices and sort those invoices that we're going to try to collect on, tracking the accounts receivable, trying to get paid. Uh, payment links, get paid easily anywhere, anytime with payment leaks. So this is going to be another kind of setup process that they, that you can look into and put together. So maybe we'll look at that in more detail later, but then we've got the products and services. These are the things that we actually sell kind of underlying foundational things that we need to put together, uh, like, like the inventory items and service items. And then on the pay side, now we're on the vendor cycle, the expenses cycle, the purchases cycle, the vendors represent people that we pay to in order to get goods and services we need in the business. So now we've got all, of, all the people that we pay, the utility company, the phone company, and so on and so forth. And then we can sort the bills. Bills represent uh, outstanding uh, bills that we put into place that we have not yet paid, accounts payable, tracking accounts payable in essence. So there's that one. We, we work in there a lot to track our receivables and payables depending on whether we're on a cash-based system or not. Then we've got the customer and leads. So we start off with the customers, which is basically the same as the customer center that we saw up top in the get paid area. And then you've got your marketing boost business with MailChimp. So MailChimp is an email kind of service that you can you can uh, try to connect to to do your marketing uh, campaigns. So that's kind of an add on type of feature they're advertising there. And then you've got your commerce. So one of the benefits with the online version is that you can you can do some more kind of integrations with your online uh, commerce and that we might look into in more detail later, seamlessly connect your sales channels and so, so on. And then you've got your orders, seamlessly connect your sales channels. So we might look into those in more detail in the future. It's kind of a specialty area. And then we've got your payroll information, which of course is the payroll cycle, which is similar to the vendor cycle, except now you've got all these added duties you got to do with the payroll and then bookkeeping down below. So in the bookkeeping, you've got your transactions up top. So I closed out some of the items that were that were in here to get to the transactions, which is basically uh, your banking transactions. So we'll talk about bank feeds in a, in a whole section or course in and of themselves 
and get it and dive into the bank feeds at a future point. Remember, you want to get an understanding for your accounting process in general before you just turn on the bank feeds unless you have a very simplified type of system because they can kind of complicate things. So, so you would think the bank feeds would be up here in this banking area, but no, they're down here in the bookkeeping. And then you got uh, uh, app transactions, receipts, and then uh, the sales here. So the sales and expense information. So we'll be diving into those in more detail in future presentations. You'll be doing a lot of work here. If you have the bank feeds on, you've got uh, your rules. So the rules are gonna be set up in relation basically to the bank feeds. You got your chart of accounts. I'm gonna say, see the chart of accounts here. These are the underlying foundational accounts you set up when you first create the accounting system. You've got your tags, which kind of is kind of a specialty feature that can help you sort your data. So we might look at tags more uh, in the future. And then my accountant, an accountant can be your best bu business partner. So you can you know, look for an accountant that can access your, your files and possibly then help you with uh, taxes and whatnot at the end of the year. And then you've got the reconcile, which is a place we can go to do the bank reconciliations and we'll go into there in a future point. Then you've got your taxes. When it comes to taxes, we could have things like in the United States, the sales tax, they got the 1099 filing. And then you've got more apps down here. One of the great things about QuickBooks Online is that it does have more access to different apps to help you with the integrations. So, and we'll talk more about that. Hopefully we're gonna get into more of that in a sections uh, in and of, of themselves. So if you have other platforms like like an, an Amazon or something like that, or Shopify or whatnot, you might be able to use the apps to get more specific data that you would like to be feeding in to uh, the QuickBooks system. And so that that whole process is, is you get better and better if you can get the right integrations. Let's do the same thing, go into the cog up top. Now you've got your, your company, your list, your tools, and I'm gonna switch to the accounting view to just get a look and feel of it under the accounting view, which is kind of the older view that's here. So now you've got a different kind of look for the plus button. You still have the plus button though. This is where your normal forms will be input. And now you've got your uh, dashboard up top, which you know isn't as cool as the get things done page. And it's basically a home page is what I would just call it. But now it's your dashboard. It's still somewhat cooler than a home page, I guess. And then you got your banking. So if I go into the banking, now you've got your your tags this way. And, and notice now when you go into the banking, the banking is where you would think it would be. You know, they're not trying to sell you a loan right here or something. And so notice if I go into the drop down this way, I've got my banking, my apps, my rules, my tags, my receipts, which are also the same as the, the headers up top. So banking, app transaction, rules, tags, receipts. And then you've got your sales down here. Same thing, if I was to want to go in there a little bit more quickly, I can go into uh, here, this, this drop down gives me where I can go specifically, which is the same as the tags up top, which I can maneuver through thusly. And then the customer and leads that we saw before has the marketing and customers, the cash flow now that we saw in the other one, we've got the expenses, which are basically gonna be the vendor, uh, the vendor cycle, the expenses cycle, bills and vendors. We have the tabs up top here. We've got the payroll, payroll, and the tabs up top. The reports is just in its own tab down here instead of being under, I believe, business. And then you've got your reports. Once you're in here, it looks the same. Your taxes, once you're in here, it looks the same. Mileage, and then your accounting. Accounting has the chart of accounts and the reconciliation. And then the My Accountant. And then your capital. This is where the PPE stuff notices. I, I think this is much more appropriate that they put it down here at the bottom when they're clearly trying to tell you something instead of having it the second to top one up here. And then you've got the commerce and the apps uh, down below. And so, and then insurance. Uh, peace of mind. Again, they're kind of selling you business owners policy and insurance, but at least they put that stuff at the bottom. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like you got to look at it every time when you're up top. So I'm more used to this accounting view clearly. And, but I will do my best to toggle between the two. I want to give the business view. I don't want to just be like, ah, the business views, 
not good. You know, it's got some pros and cons. It does have a, a slicker look and feel. And if you're on different apps and, and whatnot, maybe if you're on your phone, it might populate more because it has less easily because it has less, you know, options on this side. So I'll do my best to go back and forth between these views to try to say where everything is located. QuickBooks has things located now on these two main views. They change the locations sometimes. Uh, and uh, and there's multiple ways to get into the same thing on either of these views. So that means that when you're working on something, someone else might do something completely different. But you want to have an idea of, of where everything is located and how they're getting there and how to get to places multiple ways. The more connections you have in your mind of how to do the same thing, the better you understand the thing you are doing. So we will we will try to do things from different angles as we go.